Welcome to Sunstar Gums virtual training on interdental cleaning to prevent and treat gum disease, where we review the state of the evidence and work out what it means for you. You're about to discover module three, in which we explore the latest literature on different mechanical interdental cleaning methods and how they contribute to treatment in patients with periodontal disease. Module 3 is part of a series of four training modules based on the evidence from 17 randomized controlled trials and six systematic reviews and meta-analyses. Module 3 on treatment was developed to allow you to become familiar with the evidence base on interdental cleaning strategies for patients with periodontal disease. To enable you to take a closer look at a recent landmark study. To help you develop your own opinion on interdental cleaning strategies for each of your patient types. What's your take? Do floss and interdental brushes yield equivalent results in the treatment of patients with periodontal disease? The evidence clearly demonstrates that appropriate use of interdental brushes and rubber interdental cleaners over three months reduces clinical signs of periodontal disease. Let's take a look at the evidence. We reviewed evidence from RCTs, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses for commonly available interdental cleaning devices, floss, interdental brushes, and rubber interdental cleaners. We started with a simple search strategy in PubMed, using the search term interdental and the relevant type of trial. We then selected papers that compared the efficacy of different interdental cleaning techniques in the treatment of periodontal disease. We looked at data from 14 treatment studies in over 1,000 patients with periodontal disease and from eight systematic reviews. The studies clearly indicate that interdental brushes are more effective than floss in managing periodontal disease. For all clinically relevant parameters, interdental plaque, gingival inflammation, bleeding, and pocket depth. Moreover, patients with mild to moderate periodontitis seem to prefer interdental brushes to floss. Let's dig a bit deeper and take a look at how interdental brushes, but also new generation rubber interdental cleaners, compare to floss across specific interventions in patients with periodontitis. We tabulated results across 12 different studies. The 12 treatment studies clearly show that when used for the treatment of patients with periodontitis, interdental brushes are effective versus baseline versus toothbrush alone and versus floss for all important outcomes, interdental plaque, gum inflammation, and gum bleeding. They are also more effective versus floss in reducing pocket depth. What about rubber interdental cleaners? The studies show that rubber interdental cleaners are effective versus baseline in reducing interdental plaque, gum inflammation, and gum bleeding. Interestingly, they were also shown to be effective versus interdental brushes for three important clinical parameters, gum inflammation, gum bleeding, and gingival abrasion. Rubber interdental cleaners yield great results in the treatment of patients with gum disease. Intriguing, right? Let's take a closer look at Dr. Sloat's randomized controlled study comparing rubber interdental cleaners with interdental brushes. The objective of Dr. Sloat's study was to determine the efficacy of rubber interdental cleaners and interdental brushes in reducing gingivitis and to evaluate participants' attitudes and possible side effects. 
The study was an examiner-blind, single-center, randomized controlled trial, evaluating the reversal of experimental gingivitis in 42 systemically healthy volunteers who were non-users of interdental cleaning devices. This study used a split-mouth design. It began with an experimental phase. After familiarization and prophylaxis, participants were asked to refrain from brushing mandibular teeth for 21 days. What followed was a four-week treatment phase. Subjects were assigned interdental cleaning as an adjunct to manual tooth brushing. All subjects used interdental brushes and rubber interdental cleaners either in the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant. In this manner, the primary comparison could be made between the two quadrants in the same patient, avoiding intrapatient variability. Treatment phase measurements were taken at week 1, 2, and 4. The study outcome measures were bleeding on marginal probing, dental plaque index score, and gingival abrasion score. Full mouth measures were taken during both phases, the experimental phase and the treatment phase. Let's dive into the study results starting with bleeding scores. Initially, bleeding scores for interdental brushes and rubber interdental cleaners were similar. However, differences started appearing. At four weeks, there was a significant difference between cleaning devices in favor of rubber interdental cleaners. The effect appears to accumulate over time. Gingival abrasion scores show the same pattern, with differences between interdental brushes and rubber interdental cleaners building up over time and leading to a significantly different gingival abrasion score at week four. To sum up, Dr. Sloat's 2018 study showed that while the performance of interdental brushes and rubber interdental cleaners was initially similar with respect to bleeding, gingival inflammation and abrasion, as of four weeks, rubber interdental cleaners began to outperform interdental brushes and were considered to be more pleasurable to use by the participants. In summary, the evidence indicates that the latest generation rubber interdental cleaners have an excellent performance versus gold standard interdental brushes, may be associated with less abrasion, and seem to be preferred by patients because they're particularly easy to use. The implications for dental practice? While you may recommend the combination of rubber interdental cleaners and interdental brushes to the more compliant patients, for those unlikely to use more than one interdental cleaner, you might be better off recommending rubber interdental cleaners, as they are easier to use and may be associated with less bleeding and less gingival abrasion. Ready for one final module? Then join us for Module 4 to review challenges surrounding patient compliance and to benefit from expert commentary on this difficult issue in oral hygiene practice. If you found this interesting and would like to take a deeper dive into the literature, head to the Sunstar Gum website to download the white paper and a full set of slides.